Howdy again, this is Tubal Kane, and this video is all about Sterling engines again, and particularly, and this one is my uh, Heinrich uh, Sterling, that is a hot air engine, and I have never shown this one, I don't believe, but I made it about 15 years ago. I think it was the first engine that I made after I retired, but uh, what made me think of this, and I haven't done anything with Sterlings in quite a while, that Mr. Bill Lee out of the great state of Washington sent me this entire pile about 10 inches high of books related to hot air engines and many of them I had never seen and this is going to be some good reading these I have seen by Dr. Svent this is probably $300 worth of books this one I do have already that's a pretty common one by Andy Ross hot air engines, and then there's a bunch of, uh, I think these are reprints here, and then yet another one here on how to build a five horse Sterling engine, and on the bottom, I've seen these books, but they're quite expensive, the Sterling engine manual by uh, Rizzo, and then here volume two by Rizzo, and those are real nice books put out by looks like Camden Publishing Company so this is going to be some good reading and study material for me and uh, maybe a kick in the rear to get started on these engines again so let's talk about the Heinrichy I hope I'm uh, pronouncing it right but this is a model of a Heinrichy engine and the lower part is simply the furnace or the place where the heat goes into the displacer and I'm going to run this in a few minutes so don't turn this off there were no plans for this, but uh, I had this book here, A Practical Treatise uh, on Hot Air Engines by Edgar Westbury. This is a T publication from uh, the UK, and they got great books. And uh, in here, the Chapter 7 is all about this Heinrichy engine, and, and although there are no plans, there's all kinds of information about it. These aren't really working drawings, but the general idea of how, how they work is in here and so I made some castings and some of this is just fabricated metal and this is water cooled and I'm not going to talk at all in this video about the principles of a Sterling engine or what makes them run but I do have this video that quite a few people have watched so if you want to look that YouTube video up that will tell you exactly how these engines work because I'm not going to cover that now but I think I'll run this for you now, but before I do, these are zinc flywheels. And the reason I made them out of zinc, you might call it pot metal, is that it's very heavy. I didn't want aluminum flywheels, I wanted heavy wheels, and zinc is quite heavy. This has, these are six inches in diameter, and the bore right here, this is the power cylinder. The bore is uh, one and three quarters, or one and one eighth rather, and a stroke of one and three quarters and the displacer down here is about one and three quarter diameter and that's where the heat is going to connect with the engine I'm not going to run it as a water cool but as you know these engines get very hot and once the top gets to the same temperature as the bottom they won't run anymore so here's the inlet for the water and then there's an outlet on the other side so there's a a cooling chamber in there and to be honest with you I don't remember how I built that if there's uh, coils in there or I just milled that out or, or what I did there are ball bearings up here I kind of cheated so there's two ball bearings and then uh, these other bearings here are just sleeve bearings and you can feel a little bit of compression all right let me fire it up for you these engines will run on any kind of fuel. It doesn't matter as long as it's hot enough. It could be wood or it could be gasoline or charcoal. It could be dirty underwear for that matter if you could get it hot enough. And I have used Sterno, but Sterno doesn't seem to be quite hot enough. And this is a Sterno can, but I made an alcohol burner out of it just with some rope in there. So this is just denatured alcohol. One of the disadvantages of hot air engines like this, it takes a while for them to get up to heat. In other words, it's not going to start right away like a, a gasoline engine. So I'm putting that flame right underneath the displacer. And you got to be careful with alcohol. And don't let children do this, but 
this this will get pretty hot and the other thing with alcohol is that you sometimes can't see the flame and you could uh, you could get burned badly there's a little bit of an orange flame there because of the wicks so when this is hot enough it it will start to run but you're gonna to have to spin it it is not self starting so I'll see you back in about five minutes it's actually only been one minute but I want it's not ready to run but it wants to run and I want you to see this because then you can uh, see what the power stroke is all about and you see it's one I think I can I think I can I think I can this is another one that I built some time ago and I think I have a video of that. I have quite a few videos on Sterling engines so just do a search Tubal Cane Sterling engines but this little engine was also taken out of this book and it's the, the cover of the book as well. This is a good book if you can find it and, and you have an interest. Well the Heinrichy is running and that's about as fast as it's going to run without a bigger flame. And I have experimented extensively sometimes with uh, three and four wicks, just all different kinds of heat. And if I were to take a propane torch to the displacer, and I, I call this a furnace, I think it's called a stove. I forgot some of the terminology. But she's clipping along maybe at 50 RPM. I didn't really measure it. I hope some of you find this moderately interesting. And... This would be a good science project for, uh, for boys, or girls for that matter. And you can buy that little engine here. I, I don't know if they still make them or not, but these are commercially available. But they're going to run about $100, and they run real nice. But that would be good for a science project as well. Remember, all the power is derived here on the power cylinder, not on the displacer. All that is doing is moving the hot air from the hot end to the cold end. And this is starting to warm up. I can still touch it, but it is warm to the touch. And when this gets hot enough, and we have, uh, I guess, equilibrium, both ends are the, are the same temperature, it will not run. That's the necessity of the uh, cooling system. And a lot of these are air-cooled. This is a water-cooled. That little one I just showed you on the, the front of that Andy Ross book was air-cooled. You could see the fins on it. But I had trouble with those overheating. You couldn't run them all that long, in my experience. Leave a comment and be sure and watch my 650 other machine shop videos and industrial arts videos. And this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now and I'll see you in my next video.